<clears throat> Alright, sorry about that. Just uh, waiting for the delay to hit. And uh, just trying to figure out all these names up here. We've got Maple Story Gods up against is GG. So GG is Stanking, J.O., Flea, Q.O., Mad. And then on the other side, it's UR, Ritsu, Boris, Justin, Buryu. So Maple Story Gods. I don't know if you guys remember that game, Maple Story. Alright, so let me get this just real quick from Grant. I'll write this down so I'm not an idiot. Whooped is you are, and then Fangblade is Justin. Dire team back. Tiger. Boris is Boris, and then Ritsu is. Shinobi. All right, so we got everything down. Whoop, do you are? Fangblade, Justin. Tiger is Buryu. Boris is Boris. And Shinobi is Ritsu. And uh, Fangblade and Tiger. Just a little um, fun fact for you guys. They're like the two best players in the Maple Story game, a game that came out. Probably around 2006 in the beta. Just a little bit of, uh, you know, side information, if you're wondering. I don't know if you care. But um, those two used to be, like, the top players. So, hopefully they can emulate their Maple Story ability in a Dota ability as we get Maple Story Gods yeah. against is GG. So we take a look at these bands, Centaur, Lone Druid, Slardar, Alchemist for the side of Maple Story, and it's GG, Sniper, Ember, Weaver, and the two picks from both sides, Keeper of the Light, as well as an Axe, and then Sand King, as well as Life Stealer. So Sand King, like a Slardar, at least recently, when he's picked up in this first spot, he's usually not the off laner. Obviously, Life Stealer is going to be in that safe lane. And then uh, for the side of Maple Story Gods, could see Axe offlane with Cottle obviously being that support. So they're going to ban out the Ursa. Lifestealer is going to be looking for someone who can, again, be his vehicle to get in there. So QO is SK. <laughs> totally know all this, by the way. So Maple Story Gods, they're up to their third pick. Axe and Cottle going to be looking for their mid and safe laner. And things we've just been seeing a lot of is Jug. And in terms of another support, maybe we see a Dazzle. And there it is. And maybe I was going to say Ogre or Rubik. But with the Dazzle there, I don't think we're going to see ourselves a Huskar. It just never happens recently, even with the Dazzle coming out. And then uh, for the side of is GG, Witch Doctor is going to be picked up. So Witch Doctor going to be in that Horde 5 role. So I'm getting told by Grant that uh, Justin played Enigma three times. So be on the lookout for that. Five seconds remaining. As we see Sand King, Life Stealer, and Witch Doctor. With this Witch Doctor pickup, maybe we see Sand King more in the off lane role. But as for the side of Maple Story Gods, they have this axe, Dazzle, and Coddle. And they're still looking for a mid and a safe laner. So it looks as though this axe will be in the off lane. And in terms of mid still available, of course you've got that TA. Which could be nice with this axe as well as the Dazzle. A lot of Midas armor. So we'll see if Maple Story Gods choose to go with the TA for... And they do pick up that Jug. Jug, very popular pick in the uh, open qualifiers. So. Let's see what GG pick up to kind of counter this juggernaut pick. Jug going to be in that safe lane. Axe in the off lane. They still need a mid laner on the side of Maple Story. And then is GG. Of course, again, I've, I'm repeating myself already, Life Stealer. It's going to be in that safe lane with Sand King looking to be in that off lane, but could be that four and Witch Doctor on the five. So in terms of um, mid, they could pick up. 
Could see Storm again. Could see TA. Two pretty popular picks thus far. As well as OD has been pretty popular as well. And that might help with uh, Axe Call. Try and save someone with an Astral Imprisonment. We'll have to see how GG want to play it out. Be honest, guys, without a co-caster, it's kind of hard to bounce off myself. A little tough. My drafting isn't top by any means. So, sorry if it's a little boring. Try to kind of stick with me here. Appreciate that. So 45 seconds left over for GG. Again, still need the mid, possibly an off laner with this Sand King going four. I think Sand King is going to end up going four. And uh, actually, that'll change that. So Sand King going to be in that off lane. Earth Spirit's picked up with the Witch Doctor. So Earth Spirit and Witch Doctor are going to be your two supports. And that's a solid support duo. They can kind of roam around the map a lot and maybe find themselves a couple of kills with the Sand King. Uh, a couple of things we have been seeing recently, especially in the Chinese Dota games that I have been casting on my own. Uh, we've seen Lifestealer go in the off lane, and with a Sand King with Caustic Finale, of course you can send him into the safe lane, try and get that early farm, try and get that early XP. And with supports like Witch Doctor and Earth Spirit, you could find yourselves getting a couple of kills. You know, you're rolling Boulder in, cask, and try and do something with the Sand King's Burrow Strike. Maybe we see it go that way for the side of GG. OD is going to be banned out. I said he might be a possible pick here for the side of GG in that mid lane. And then for the side of Maple Story Gods, maybe we see a TA banned out by GG to stop that from Maple Story Gods picking that up mid. Of course, you don't want to have that extra minus armor with Melt Strike as well as the Weave. And uh, TA is a pretty solid mid hero. So just going to wait for this last ban to come out from his GG. Could see a TA, could see a Storm Spirit getting banned out by his GG. Ten seconds remaining. They're actually going to ban out that Shadow Fiend again. Not a, not, not a bad ban. Blink call with the Naga Requiem Siren. of Souls coming out is not a bad play. And we're going to get this Naga Siren mid for the side of his GG. And we just saw this for Horde versus Bean, Bean Boys and it didn't work out for Horde. Uh, they just got behind a, too quickly and it was hard for the Naga Siren to really catch up. Did make it hard once getting that Radiance and everything that really a Naga needs to make themselves a nuisance, but it's a hero that, if you're far behind, can make it very tough to come back, but can extend the game with something like a Radiance. So, last pick coming out for Maple Story Gods. Something that's going to be good up against this Naga Siren in the mid lane. Of course, I'm still thinking TA or Storm. We'll have to see what they think as they've got 12 seconds left. Ten seconds remaining. To get this Five pick. And they're going to go Medusa. Alright, so Medusa, Naga, mid. Jug going to be in that safe lane for the side of Maple Story. Gods, Axe in that off lane. Two sports are going to be Coddle and Dazzle for the side of his GG. Naga, mid. Life Stealer, safe lane. Or possibly going off with Sand King going safe lane. Uh, with Witch Doctor and Earth Spirit being the two support so we'll see who picks up what being told that mad on earth spirit is amazing and strap in boys medusa naga we're gonna get about a five hour game going here if i haven't put you to sleep already with this draft uh, i'm gonna try hard to keep you up once i get into that uh active game casting should get a little bit better for you guys. So we are going to see Yawar out on this Jug. We're going to see Justin on the Cotto, Boris on the Axe. 
Buryu on the Dazzle, and then finally Ritsu with the Medusa on the other side. Ooh, gonna be Flea on the Earth Spirit. Mad on the Sand King. Stand King with the Witch Doctor. J.O. J on the Life Stealer. And then Kua with the Naga. So, gonna really check for any big aggression coming out from either side. There are four going up top here for GG. As QO leads the way, and they are going to smoke up as four, looking over towards that top bounty rune on the side of Maple Story Gods. They won't really find anybody out just yet. If Coddle does stay nearby, they might find someone out. As they do go up top, maybe going to find Boris. So let's see, they do place a deep ward and splitting up. Uh, Boris, he'll survive, and they won't be able to find anybody on the side of Maple Story Gods as four of them have gone down towards this lower bounty route. So this, with this play, it looks as though GG will secure themselves three bounty runes. It's a slight advantage. Should be all right. Actually, Boar's going to come on forward, Mad. Fool, you going to push him on back, and that'll be about it in terms of aggression. So, Bounty Runes 3 for the side of his GG, and 1 for Maple Story Gods. It is going to be Ritsu picking it up on that Medusa. So, Ritsu going to be mid on this Medusa up against a mid Naga Siren. Let me tell you, the funnest of lanes. And then down low, we are going to see this Coddle Dazzle as well as a Jug Trilane up against J.O. on the Life Stealer. And Stan King here with the Witch Doctor. In the off lane, we do see Boris on the Axe. Max Sand King, or Mad Sand King, excuse me, saying Mad. Max, it's Mad on the Sand King and then flee over the Earth Spirit. So I wouldn't count out any rotations from the Earth Spirit. Sand King should be able to survive up against this Axe. Take a look at these lanes, and there is some possibility for some kills down low, especially with the Dazzle here with the Kato. They could get a nice Illuminate with the Poison Touch and a Blade Fury coming out from the Juggernaut to get this Life Stealer if he's not too careful. So he's got to keep this lane more towards his tower. Make sure that he doesn't get caught out by the three down low for Maple Story Gods. Take a look over mid. We do take a look at QO, who's found himself 5-1. and one, As well as Ritsu, who's 5-2. and two, And now they're both equal at 5-2. It's just such an exciting lane of both this Medusa and the Naga. Like I said, Mad should be okay up here up against just Boris. Boris picking up two stacks of Tangos as well as a Salve, so... I really do expect Flea to come on over towards mid and maybe look for a kill mid or even go all the way towards bottom and find something out there. If they can get an open wounds there combined with a rolling boulder, should be pretty easy for the side of his GG. So Buryu coming around the back end on this Life Stealer J.O. Might be in a little bit of trouble if he goes too far out. Could be a poison touch in his future if Dazzle had skilled it. Right now he just has Shadow Wave. And in previous games we have seen this Shadow Wave just annihilate some of these heroes. So we take a look over and in J.O. Just getting forced back a little bit. Shadow Wave to heal... Up, oh, Justin. Jail may be looking for something. We'll cancel out that clarity. Just so much excitement here down low. Take a look over at Mad. Two in that Burrow Strike. Two in the Caustic Finale. Boris just sitting uh, all right here with 11 last hits. And behind the Sand King, of course, who's farming very well with... 23 and 4 and let's take a look back at this most interesting lane between Ritsu and Kuo on the 
Medusa and Naga respectively. So both about even 16 and 5 for Ritsu, well 15 and 2 for Kyo. I think the winner of this lane really does depend on who gets the first rotation, and I'm, I'm still going to say it, I still expect it to be an Earth Spirit. But for now, Flea just kind of sitting up top, maybe looking for something mid. Bit of a harder kill on an axe up top with just the Sand King and the Earth Spirit. So down low right now, still just J.O. and Stanking. Take a look over at Buryu. He does not have one in Poison Touch just yet. Does get one in the Shallow Grave. Sometimes you see Shadow Wave, Poison Touch, and then Shallow Grave. But he's chosen to go one in Shallow Grave, two in Shadow Wave. So see if that ends up hurting them or helping them down low. So Justin has made his way up top. Meanwhile, this Axe, Boris, is going to move on into the jungle, try and get himself a little bit more jump in farm as he's sitting himself at 14-0. He's really looking to get those Tranquils, get that Blink Dagger out as quickly as possible for his team, get the Blink Calls, and really start the aggression for the side of Maple Story Gods. For the side of GG, again, they're waiting on the Rolling Boulders to come out from this Earth Spirit. Flea just... Sitting away in the side jungle by this secret shop. Not really making any aggressive plays. Usually we see Earth Spirits play a little bit more aggressive with their rolling boulders towards mid or even towards the bottom lane, but not as aggressive of a couple of plays that I thought I would see early on. So Med doing a very good job here at 41 and 13. He's going to have a really quick Blink Dagger. He's already got himself 1,800 gold saved up. It's almost about six minutes. He's farming at such a quick pace right now. We could see him just skip that Ring of Protection, go straight for the Blink Dagger, and maybe force some fights out early on. It's still 0-0 zero, zero, six minutes in. They could find themselves a kill on this Kato if he's not too careful, especially if that Blink Dagger's picked up in time. Meanwhile, Boris, he gets seen out by Flea, and now coming over is, man, they might be looking for a Rolling Boulder. They do get that stun with the Remnant. Mad coming in with the Burrow Strike. Now TP's coming the way of a Dazzle, who does have that Shallow Grave, and the Cooling Bleed will come out, and Mad will end up falling. There's the Manly coming out onto Flea. And Flea, he's going to try and run away. Rolling Boulder out, but the body blocks are there. And it looks as though it should be a second, and it will be, as a Culling Blade comes out again for Boris. And he'll find himself an early double kill. So Boris comes over, gets two, stops the Sand King's quick item progression of a Blink Dagger in all the hopes of getting it very quickly. Grabs a double kill of his own. And he puts himself even closer to a Blink Dagger. Just really ripped to the Blink Dagger hopes of pre-eight minutes, I'd say. Other than that, things seem to be a little bit quiet on uh, all these other lanes. The move on Boris just doesn't go well for the side of his GG, and that'll put them behind by about 500 net worth. Nothing too crazy. And about seven and a half minutes in, we will switch this over. So we do see the Medusa is leading at about 3,500 net worth. So two coming over, maybe looking for a kill onto the side of Maple Story. Guys, they do get the rolling boulder in on this. Dazzle might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the remnant kick to get the stun. And they will find one on the side of his GG. So they end up going for the Dazzle, stop him from getting that shallow grave out. They skip the jug altogether and find themselves a kill. So they get a kill, which helps boost up J.O. just a little bit more. Who should be going for that Ar armlet first. Armlet, Echo Saber, Desolator is pretty much the standard build right now for a life stealer. Ooh, 
We'll see if he goes that item progression. I know I've seen once recently where the Life Stealer did end up going for a Helm of the Dominator first. So they do get this Battle Hunger out. There's the Rolling Boulder. Not going to be on anybody. Boar's still looking for something inside these trees. Knows the Battle Hunger's out on QO. And they'll look to keep the aggression on this tower. And they will take this Tier 1. All the gold going the way of this Medusa. So we take a look over at Ritsu going for that early Yasha. So things just ever so quiet. We do see Mad has that Blink Dagger. As well as Yawar, he's made his way up top, has rotated here to, with his phase boots. I'm just trying to find himself a little bit more farm. They have sent Boris down low, who's... Not actually gotten himself a Blink Dagger. Sand King does end up getting it first, but he's only about 100 gold off of it. And once they get that Blink Dagger, I do expect them to be a little bit more aggressive on the side of Maple Story Gods and maybe find themselves a couple of early kills. And really, at this point, 10 minutes in, it's not exactly too early. So we do see the rotation out from Mad does have that Blink Dagger. So the side of Maple Story Gods does have to be careful. They have rotated the Earth Spirit up there and backing off is both Boris and Buryu. So with that Stan King and Mad, they will smoke up, maybe looking for a kill of their own, head towards the shrine area. And if Buryu's not too careful, he could be the victim here from the side of GG. Actually, take a look down low. Epicenter comes out onto Buryu. He's going to survive with that shallow grave. And TPing over is Yuwarg trying to make something happen. They lose that dazzle first. There's the Omni Slash coming on through to Stand King. So it's a one for one trade right now. And they might be looking for more in this Life Stealer. J.O. going to pop out of that Siege Creep. And he will rage up and just TP out. Meanwhile, over on the side, Fang, Fang Boy, Jesus. Justin coming over with Boris. They will get the call out. There's the rolling boulder and the silence coming out on Boris. Mad just trying to run away. Does not have enough for a burrow strike. Blink dagger up in one. And he will be able to get some space as the Earth Spirit hits two with that stone remnant. So they trade one for one. Dazzle for a Witch Doctor, not the crazy of, craziest of trades between these two teams. Now Maple Story Gods, they look to take a Tier 1 of their own. So all five are making the rotation up top. They're trying to find their first tower. If they can find a kill out on this Coddle, they might be able to get one. They need to make sure that they're able to take this tower quickly and don't lose anything for it as they're already a bit behind. So Radiance is queued up here for QO. Oh, very far ways away. Hopefully going to get it sub 20 minutes here. It's been a problem. There's the blink with the call. And we'll have to song out of this one. There's the epicenter coming through. And it's going to be a little bit of trouble as the Mana Leak does stun up QO. He'll be able to back off. No blink, no call. Meanwhile, off screen, Chuck's going to get got on, and he's going to go down to the likes of J.O. Flea and Stanking. They might be looking for more in Buryu, and there is the Burl Strike out on two. Shockwave comes out, MVP, a little bit on the neutral creep, and J.O. finds another. That's a double cable for him, taking out both the Juggernaut and the Dazzle. So they lose none, they take two. And a double kill going the way of this Life Stealer. It's pretty solid as he's picked up this Armite, probably going for an Echo Saber next. So that'll bring them back to around even. 
and push Jug back in his little item progression as he does have Helm of the Dominator already, so maybe we see him go for a Manta next. We take a look up top. There's the Burrow Strike coming out onto. They get the Silence and the Stun out on this Dazzle. And now it looks as though Man might be in a little bit of trouble. Bat Blade Fury does come his way with the Blink Call from Boris. Now the Battle Hunger out on him. They will Omni Slash, but it's not enough as he Burrow Strikes and will be able to TP out. So they use the Omni Slash from Yawar. They don't find anything. They lose a Dazzle. And that's kind of deflating for the side of Maple Story Gods. So it hasn't been the most exciting of games, but 5-3 to three in favor of GG, and they do start to pull themselves their own lead of about a 1,000 net worth. Yasha picked up for this Medusa, now going for a Scotty next. Let's take a look over at this Naga's Radiance progression, and just a little bit away from this Sacred Relic. Oh boy, missing kills up here as the ulti comes in from the Witch Doctor. They're trying to find a kill out on... Ritsu's trying to run away, and there's the infest pop from J.O. They'll find two, so we miss one core in the Juggernaut falling. We'll see the other one go down as it is Ritsu. It will be the second death on the side of Maple Story Gods, and GG, they really start to pull away. My bad, missing those kills. So Echo Saber are just about done for this Life Stealer Jo, And the Sacred Relic should be there for the Naga. It is on the way. Picked up by the Courier at the Secret Shop. Let's take a look over at Matt, who's found himself a bunch of participation. 1-1-4. One, one, looking for a Yules. And does already have that Blink Dagger, of course. Over on the other side, four Maple Story Gods. Medusa still looking for that Scotty. We take a look over at the Axe, looking for the Blade Mail. And not too far off of it. That could be a solid pickup on the side of Maple Story Gods. And I'm not saying that's a team fight changer, but it'll do a little bit. So things kind of quiet for both sides. This Boris just continuing to farm and will find himself about 150 gold away from finishing off this blade mail. Let me take a look over at the jug you are. We'll be looking for that Manta style, but he is far from it. So QO over on this Naga, very close to finishing off this Radiance. Yule's picked up for the Sand King, and they will start to make their way over with the Infest out on Mad. We'll see if they defend this Tier 2, just about to have that Radiance. It would be a good team fight for them to win. It would finish them off. There's the Blink forward with the Burrow Strike, and there's the Infest coming out as well as the Epicenter. The Blade Fury will save the life of UR for just a little while longer. You get the Stone Gaze to come out from Ritsu as well. That'll back off the side of GG. They won't lose any on the side of Maple Story Gods, and they might look to go back in. So, Blink with the Blade Mail. QO might be in a little bit of trouble. Down to about half health with that Battle Hunger. Forces out the song. Actually thinking about going back in with Stan King and as well as J.O. They get the ulti from the Witch Doctor. Not going to get the kill as the Shallow Grave is there, but it is inevitable as he will fall to J.O. getting a double kill. End up losing the Naga. But they'll take it to get themselves an axe. Yeah. 
Actually, it was a little bit short of that radiant, so maybe not the best deaths there for Kyo. So Yawar does head over towards this Roche, knowing there's no Naga for 10 and no Song. He's getting circled out, however, by QO. They kind of expect it coming. Rotating over is Stan King, but he's the only one making a rotation over, as there are three in here for Maple Story. Gods have this Roche to about half health. And there's nothing coming over from the side of GG. It looks as though they're just going to give it up. They will take Roche. They will take the Aegis. It's going to come out on Ritsu. Take a look at this Medusa. Not too close to this, Scotty, but getting closer ever so slowly. And now the Radiance is there in full for Kyo. So Mad now looking for a four staff to add to that utility of a Yules and a Blink. And he's been doing very well thus far with the Burrow Strikes and the Epicenters. He's been throwing the way of Maple Story Gods. Dyer's middle is under treasures. So we actually take a look up top. J.O. might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the Mana Leak. He's going to have to try and TP out. And will under the sight of three heroes from Maple Story Gods. Take a look over at Mad, who might be in a little bit of trouble. Has used that Burrow Strike already. They were looking to get that Blink call out on him, but he'll just Blink back and put himself into a little bit of safety. So Mad now infested again with this Life Stealer. Let's see what they can do. They Blink forward, get the Burrow Strike with the Infest Pop. They'll immediately delete Buryu from the map. So they get Wicked Sick out on this Life Stealer. As you can totally tell as it shows up right on the screen. And he is now 7-0-1. Doesn't sit top of the net worth, but he's doing very well for himself. Almost has that Desolator. At 7-0-1, you can't even say he's close to doing poorly. So, as for Ritsu... 900 gold away from this Scotty. Going to be a big a big item for the side of Maple Story Gods. We take a look over at the axe. He's got that blade mail as well as the blink. It looks as though he'll be going for a four staff then a BKB. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So Pretty sure Kyo was spotted there by Ritsu, and he's going to move over as Ritsu's just going to TP away, as well as this Naga. We take a look down low. Jail might be in a little bit of trouble. He does manage to get out, but now Mad might be the one who's in trouble. Not going to have the call in time is Boris, and Mad will be able to TP out. Stan King as well as Flea are up top, and going in deep is Stan King going to throw that cast. Blinding Light is there. There's the Rolling Boulder forward with the Silence and the Stun. They go for the ult from Stan King. Should be enough, but there's the Shallow Grave. Let's see if it keeps him alive with the Magnetize. Meanwhile, on the back, and he's trying to get that call from Boris, but not going to be there. So now Boris might be in a little bit of trouble as the Burrow Strike comes through with the Infest Pop. He's going to get hit. And now the Stun comes through on the Dazzle trying to get the Shallow Grave. But he is stunned in silence by Flea. And they will lose two up top on the side of Maple Story Gods. An amazing play there by Flea to get that Stun out before the Shallow Grave can save the life of Boris. So GG doing very well with the combination of the Infest onto the Sand King. 
lot of damage that comes out real quick from the Burrow Strike and Infest Pop. So they've been using it very effectively, and we can definitely see if they continue to use it effectively onto the side of Maple Story Gods, as it really shouldn't slow down. Now the Desolator out for J.O., and they'll go right on back to it. So there's the Force Staff picked up as well on Mad, and now looking for the Burrow Strike as well as the Infest. They've got the Blink towards QO. And with the two of them together, they might be able to find something. They do ping it out, and... Mad starting to head up that way. Does spot the Dazzle. There it is. Burrow Strike. Pop on the Infest. J.O. with another. So 13-4 in favor of GG. They've taken a 6,000 experience lead as well as a 4,000 lead on the net worth. They're just continuing to look to extend that lead. It's been very hard for Maple Story Gods to really get out past their tier twos. Find themselves the farm they need to come back and escape. Take another look over at Yawar and he's found himself that Yasha still looking for the mana about. Eh, he's got it now with that Blade Fury. I was taking, I'm going to say he was a little bit behind on it, but he does pick it up. The items from Maple Story Gods are a little bit delayed here as they've been losing fight after fight thus far. So mad coming over, still infested with this smoke play, trying to be aggressive towards the side of Maple Story, and Yawar might be a little bit too far out. Mad to spot him. There is the Burrow Strike, going to be a little bit short, and Yawar should have enough time to TP out and does do so. Stan King was over with the smoke, but not in time. So they are going to let this Juggernaut get away. And maybe they'll look to finish off this Tier 1 down low. Shouldn't be too hard for them 26 minutes into this game. coming in from the side of Maple Story. Not going to find anybody as J.O. already backs up. Does not get that Tier 1 by himself. The Radiant does end up getting credit for it, but the extra gold would have been nice. There's the Infest again out on Mad, a play that has been working for him. But it will just be the Infest to TP out. So Scotty and Manta style finished fully for Ritsu here, and he's not sitting top of the net worth, but that's only by a touch as this Naga Siren is uh, up there at 14,200. And with that Radiance Boots of Travel, Manta style going to make it very hard for the side of Maple Story to really push out far. Solutions just making it very difficult for Maple Story to make the moves they want to make. That's not going to stop Ritsu. Is They're still trying to take this Tier 2, and nobody from the side of GG is really all too close as they've found a couple of them up top, and it is the Infest back out on Mad, and they under, are under Ward Vision, so they know where they are. They can continue to push this Tier 2, as well as the Tier 2 down low. We're now going for a Tier 3 possibility as they've opened that up. Still sitting up top. It's a five-man smoke for the side of Maple Story. Let's see if they come on back towards the side of GG as they do turn it around. And, ooh, they might find QO. Is going to have to use that song. And 
Staying a bit close as the rotations come out. Epicenter getting charged up by Mad. He's going to try and go in here with the Burl Strike. Comes out on two with the Epicenter. That's going to be huge. But now the Stone Gaze follows from Miritsu. And he's going to try and strike down the side of GG. They will take one out in the Sand King. And now J.O. trying to run for his life. Flea going to get that Silence out. And now the Witch Doctor ulti from Stand King is going to hit away at the side of Maple Story, But not really doing too much. And he will ooh, stay alive for the time being. But there's the Culling Blade to finish him off from the axe so a two for two trade they do take out the sand king and they still will continue to get that call as it looks as though boris is going to get very low there's qo to finish it up but jo is going to fall for the first time in this match he'll immediately buy back and now he's looking to tp in they're trying to get that remnant through they do hit up yawara and will take him out now the gem is on the table So after all is said and done, 17-7, to 7, the net worth does take a little bit of a dip, but they did lose Yawar, as well as this Axe, so it's two big cores going down on the side of Maple Story. It did force J.O. to buy back to get those kills, but with the Desolator, Echo Saber, and Armlet already out on him, it's not a huge loss for him, as he's got the items that he basically needs to be effective already. Stone Gaze almost winning the fight for Ritsu. Did turn it around for just a little bit, but the side of Maple Story, they were all very low. It's hard to keep that fight in their favor as they continue to go in. And J.O., although dying for the first time, to come back and finish off two more. Let me take a look up top. Yules is out. He'll blink away. The side of Maple Story just trying to find something as they need to inch their way out of this 4,000 net worth deficit. Actually, coming around is mad. There's the Burrow Strike gonna miss on you, War. And now the weave comes through the extra armor onto this Juggernaut. Boris may be looking for a blink call, and there's the song. So. This might turn around the fight for GG if they choose to go in, but it looks as though they'll just run away. And now trying to blink in with the call is Boris. Can they get it on Stan King? No. So Song is used. They don't find anything on the side of Maple Story. Got on the retreat. They're not going to find Flea there with the blink call. Still, Maple Story Gods, they're just trying to find a pickoff of their own, really trying to take a fight for the first time in this game. There's the Blink Burrow Strike and the Infest popped by J.O. And uh, you saw him for a second, and then he was gone. So the Dazzle does die. So with that, they're going to try and come over, take this Roche. No Weave available, no Dazzle available for 30 seconds. So without the Shallow Grave... Not too sure if Maple Story really wants to get too aggressive to stop this Roche. It is the second Roche of the game. Most likely going to be put over on J.O. So there it is. Finished off. J.O. picks up the Aegis. See, they might look for more. They're definitely going to feel a little bit more safe to push. On the side of GG. So they do spot you are Flea nearby looking for a nice rolling boulder as well as a stun. If they can get a kill out onto this Juggernaut, he's going to be spotted. Flea not turning around as he's got his eyes possibly set on safety as both the Kato and the Dazzle are there. We take a look over at Mad, still looking for that Ags. 
does have enough money for it. We'll see if he saves for buyback. But feeling this comfortable with the lead they have, and maybe he'll just full-on buy out at this moment. Ooh, actually... So, the pressure coming in from the side of Maple Story down low. Again, it's it's very difficult up against a Naga, and actually, Yawar is going to spot QO. QO just continues to walk away, cut off these creeps. Yawar does not go in, and maybe not too sure he can win that fight. Take a look over at this Medusa. Ritsu's found himself quite a bit of farm within the owner, Scotty Manta. But it hasn't really been too effective as they've been losing a couple of these fights up against GG. Has been going a little bit better for the side of GG in terms of net worth as they are climbing it up to about 6,000. Mad doing what he can to push out these creep waves as well as obviously the Naga with the Radiance QO. Just a whole bunch of illusions to deal with if you're the side of Maple Story, and it is not easy. This jug pretty far behind, although equal with this life stealer Manta Maelstrom and Helm of the Dominator is all right, but on the side of this life stealer with the Aegis now looking to get an AC. In terms of item value, I think it is much better out on Jail. So here comes a four-man smoke coming in from GG. Going to try and make a big push here with the Aegis. And if they can find themselves a couple of kills, that could be a tier three as well as a set of racks. So there's the blink on forward with the Burl Strike. Hits that Dazzle immediately takes him off the map. And now they've got no shallow grave. But the side of GG, they just back off. So Ags finally comes in for Mad. And the Creep Waves are pushing out for the side of GG. And they're going to start to make their first high ground siege up top. Oh, there's the Burrow Strike from a long range. Will hit on that Medusa. Jo's going to try and go in. There's the Silence from Flea as well as the Stun. There's the Blink Call with the Blade Mail. J.O. might be in a little bit of trouble getting hit by the entire side of Maple Story, And now the side of GG, they do start to back off as they don't feel comfortable up on the high ground. So again, Mad is infested. He's going to blink. Burrow strike. There's the infest pop again. Silenced up is Boris. And it looks as though he'll be the first to fall in this fight. Ulti comes through from both the Medusa. And now there's the song trying to set something up for GG. No, they're just going to try and get out. So Axe dead for 50 seconds. Does have buyback, but the entire side of GG, they're just going to back off. So with that, they are down about 10,000 net worth. Not uh, impossible to come back from. You do have a Medusa here who is pretty solid for the high ground as well as the Axe. And then they do have the pushing potential from both the Medusa and the Juggernaut if they do take a fight while holding. So Aegis will be reclaimed. AC almost finished for this Life Stealer. And the game kind of gets stagnant once again. You can't really force anything to happen when you're the caster, but you, you'd hope you could. As we continue to see QO push out these creep waves with the illusions and just be that big nuisance that the Naga is up against the side of Maple Story. So mad. Sitting pretty well up above that net worth of the Juggernaut with the Yules, Four Staff, as well as that Ags and Blink. And then just very farmed up. Had a great start to this game. Got that early Blink and has been an absolute terrorizer for the side of GG on to Maple Story. Now again with that 
in Fest. They're going to be looking for the Blink Burrow Strike. They do get the song out here on Boris. Boris is going to be in a, Boris is going to be in a little bit of trouble. There's the call, but now the ulti comes out from Stan King. There's the Omni Slash. Blinding Light comes on through. So they will get a kill on the Witch Doctor. There's the Burrow Strike. We'll get one more, and Boris on the back end does fall. They get the Yules out here on the Juggernaut. Yuar just trying to get away with that Blade Fury. Hasn't TP'd out just yet. There's the Mantisile with the Rolling Boulder, and he's not going to be able to get out in time as J.O. gets a double kill and three die on the side of Maple Story while losing none on the side of GG. So they take an even bigger net worth lead. As they don't have a jug for 50 seconds, this should be at least the tier two. And maybe GG look to go after tier three. Medusa, yeah, I, that was interesting. To look to TP in front of the entire side of GG, maybe not the smartest play, and that's exactly why it gets stopped. And now blinking on forward, Rolling Boulder comes through from Flea, not going to hit on anybody. And now J.O., he is going for this tier three weave out onto the side of GG. J.O. just standing and taking it. There's the mana leak. J.O. might be in a little bit of trouble. He's getting bounced around here, and now the Stone Gaze comes out. From Ritsu, they might be able to get themselves a kill, and they will. That's actually 96 seconds on the sideline with no buyback. Boris, he'll spot out Flea. This should be another kill for him, but Mad is going to end up getting that Burrow Strike. Not going to save the life of Flea, and now he might be the one who's in a little bit of trouble. Boris trying to come on through with a Caustic Finale. Does enough to stop the blink of Boris, and the blink out from Mad will be enough. So they lose two. Buyback now there for the Life Stealer. And they lose two trying to take high ground, but they do end up taking a Tier 3. So the buyback is there again for the life stealer. It wasn't there at the beginning when he first died. Yes, I know. And now with that, they're going to, I would say, try and force the buyback out from this life stealer would put them, at least put GG on edge. Make it very difficult for them to want to push for quite some time and then have to wait for that Roche once again. Naga Illusion still making space, cutting off these creeps, and despite taking out the Life Stealer as well as the Earth Spirit, it's just, it's a hard push. Naga just such a nuisance to the side of Maple Story. You know, it, it's, a, it's a Naga that just continues to push, takes half a Rax here on the side of Maple Story. It's just pressure after pressure after pressure. You think you've held your base. And then just like that, under the noses of both teams and myself, you lose half a Rax. So Maple Story can only do so much to stop the side of GG. It's like they need an entire team wipe with no buybacks on the side of GG to even think that they have a chance of pushing on forward. So Mad going to go in with J.O. And it looks as though Maple Story not going to make their way over to stop this. I, I mean, they really can't. You give up trying to keep these lanes pushed out for just a moment and QO will make you pay. Do, do get the Aegis once again out on Jo. They do get the cheese out on Mad, so it looks as though they'll be ready to push. They've got the Illusions continuing to push on forward and making space and making it the availability to plan out for the side of GG. They're waiting for a moment to find Maple Story vulnerable, and when you see a Medusa go out like that, that's the moment to capitalize. Someone who's out of the base just a little bit too much. Where Mad and J.O. can find themselves a blink burrow strike and an infest pop, so. J.O. gonna move over towards this last shrine on the side of Maple Story. They do get it. Of 
course. And just continuing to push these lanes out and find themselves a little bit more farm. Top. I, I mean, I guess Buryu's trying to do something with this Dazzle. They're trying to make something happen as these illusions continue to push into the side of Maple Story. They can only do so much. They've lost this Tier 3 down low. They've got one more Tier 3 remaining mid. They don't even have the Aegis and no chance at it as it's already be t been taken by GG. So Maddie is infested, trying to make a play here. So Ritsu does back off with those illusions. The infest play has been working wonders for the side of GG, and if they can catch one person out, that could just end the game. People getting a little bit uh, risky here as they try to push out bottom. They put themselves in a very vulnerable state when they're this far past the river. With that, it will be a four-man smoke for the side of GG. Just looking to make a play on to Maple Story and really just end this game. And QO down low being very much a nuisance with this double damage. The heart, the defusal blade. It's really at this point almost an unkillable Naga Siren. So there's the recall back. No ward up there for the side of Maple Story. They gotta try and make a play happen. There's the ward now. They see that they've got the coddle there. The burrow strike follows through with the infest, and they will find themselves one. And right there, they'll just back off. Infest back into mad, and now they're looking for even more. Blink burrow strike on the dazzle. He'll fall as well. Both supports are out of this game. There's the blink with the call on the Earth Spirit. But not really doing too much as well as the Omni Slash just for this one hero. And now J.O. is going to have to try and back off as the Earth Epicenter comes out from Mad. They will lose the Aegis on J.O. But still have everybody alive and no Dazzle on the side of Maple Story. Wave Fury coming through on J.O. who is raged up. Trying to do something to the side of Maple to end this game. Burrow Strike comes on through to the Medusa but... Not going to follow it up with really much of anything. And you know why this is happening? They've taken their bottom set of racks. So the cancer continues. They lose their Earth Spirit, but they use Song. Maybe they look to set up again. There's the Burrow Strike out on Boris. They'll get another. And now they might even look for more. There it is, Blink, or not even Blink, just Burrow Strikes to the high ground, takes out the Coddle. There's the buyback from two as well as the Weave. And now J.O. might be in a little bit of trouble as he's trying to TP out. The call not in time, and they all do successfully escape. When you take these team fights up top, you're so occupied in saving this. There are one melee racks up top that they lose both the racks down low. It's just the... Immaculate strategy of a Naga Siren. Make you focus on... Oh, boy. Make you focus on something else. And then end up losing your racks for it. Oh, there is the net coming out on the Courier. And dead. So insult to injury, they'll lose the Courier there, too. So these illusions are still making it terrible for Maple Story to hold. Just like the game it is. Game that's been out since 2006, just holding to ho trying to hold its player base. And that's exactly what the side of Maple Story is trying to do here. Hold on. Take a look over at Maple Story down low, just trying to push out as much as they can. And there it is. There is the Divine Rapier out on Ritsu. So the game has just changed. So the Divine Rapier is picked up. It's that last ditch effort here for a Medusa to hold their high ground. 
and they did all right at it the first time around. You know, they did lose that bottom racks, but in terms of the team fighting, things were okay. Really want to keep an eye on Ritsu with this Divine Rapier. Don't really want to move my eyes from him. Don't want to watch him possibly drop it and end this game. Both teams being a little bit hesitant to go in. Not too sure if the side of GG spotted that the Divine Rapier was there for Medusa. Oh, there's the Burrow Strike coming out, but immediately just blinking away. There's no Infest there on Mad, so they don't choose to go fully in. They'll just Burrow Strike the Medusa, make Ritsu feel uneasy, and continue to push with these illusions and with themselves. Medusa also has this Butterfly, MKB, Scotty, Divine Rapier, Manta, and Mjolnir. Uh, tell me what's missing, guys. That would be possibly Boots. She doesn't even have feet. So sort of a stalemate trying to go for this last high ground push on the side of GG. They're trying to push in. Maybe going to find themselves that Burrow Strike. QO goes very deep in here. He's down to about half health. And he will be forced to use that song. And there's the TP out. So all that just for a song and a TP out. It looks as though GG will heal up, regroup, try again. At already about 50 minutes here in this game. I said it would take three hours. You guys aren't believing me. That's definitely where I see this game ending at this moment in time. As both teams are just kind of sitting back in this stalemate hold. A look again at this net worth, 30,000 in favor of the squad of GG. We take a look at the buyback. It's all there and ready for GG and only there for the Medusa. So it definitely comes down to one fight if it were to happen now, but a little bit of time should open up the buybacks for the side of Maple Story. Get a little bit more gold and be ready to fight again if they must. Slowly but surely, just waiting on something to, what's the word I'm looking for, happen in this game. There it is, waiting for Roche, and should be very easy for GG to take this fourth Roche of the game. Get themselves an Aegis and a Cheese. With this Aegis, I'm hoping for a little bit of aggression to come out from the side of GG. They've got the Aegis out on Lifestealer. He's also got the Cheese. Let's see what they do. GG start to move forward in this mid lane. thrown forward Medusa just farming up and now QO is there Boris gets the blink with the call QO he's gonna be in a whole bunch of trouble and that's it after all that waiting he's dead 
all the waiting, all the time. And they finally get themselves a kill on QO, who's dead for quite some time. There's the Burrow Strike in on the Coddle, and the Infest Stone Gaze comes out from the likes of Ritsu. They are trying to get a kill on Jo. still does have that Aegis. And the buyback is forced out on QO. So that's the step that Maple Story needed to take to maybe look at winning this game. Oh, boy. So a price comes out. 27 to 12. You know, you think this game is going to go three hours. And now, including the pause, you almost say to yourself that that might be the truth. <laughs> Trying to make this as fun of a game to cast as possible. Doing it solo. Doing this game. Oh, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to stay in it. A little bit of nerves and... That combined with this game is just... Uh, I'm trying, guys, you know. Give it the best she's got, Captain. So once you saw Medusa and Naga, it was pretty much your typical game coming out here at about an hour long. Yet, we have QO back who... Now, they, they might just sit. Even with the Aegis, they're probably going to sit back. They, they're probably going to sit back not wanting to lose QO again. Because they know if QO is dead for a minute or more, it could turn into a big struggle for GG to win this game. Despite being up 27 to 12, they're up 32,000 net worth. They now have to take it as safely as possible because QO's death could mean the end of this game. And Maple Story know this. They're going to continue to hold, and that's really all they need to do at this point. And just make it ever so hard for GG to end this game. You know, they still have this Aegis out on Jo, and maybe that does make them think that they have to make a move here. But... QO, 10,000 gold, no buyback. I, I, the rest of the team does have it, but you know you need QO in these fights. 11,250 gold, yet to be spent. I mean, there's nothing really to buy at this point. Dusa, 4,100 gold saved up. Has to save for buyback. Make sure she has it. But then again, if you give up that Divine Rapier, it could just be the game. As Mad just continuing to try and push out these creep waves as much as possible. Continue to just keep pressure on Maple Story. Make it hard for them to just sit in base. They can't really go much, much where else. At some point, maybe on the side of Maple Story, they get a little bit of uh, a feeling to just want to push and fight and not just hold. So, illusions continue to rain on into this base. They are down a racks and a half. Or a set of racks and a half. And they'll continue to just hold until the end of time as we are getting close to that hour mark. Again, let's take a look at that buyback. Three and a half minutes till Naga has that buyback again. Here comes a Necro 3. Why not spend the money? Yeah. 
And here it is. Here's the move that Maple Story think they have to make. They've been holding high ground pretty well. They're not going in with the Medusa. They're just in as four right now. And let's see if they can go for something towards the side of GG, who I expect to just back off considering Aegis just got reclaimed. In some aspects, this feels like the Frieza story arc of DBZ, where we'll find out next time if something happens. And then you don't. And there it is. Ritsu might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the rolling boulder in. Boris is going to come on through, trying to find something now. Hexed up is this Earth Spirit. Might be in a little bit of trouble as the blade mail does get popped. They're trying to find themselves one kill on the side of Maple Story. Meanwhile, this Medusa, Ritsu might be in a little bit of trouble. He's healing up. And should be okay. They've lost the Earth Spirit. Man might be in a little bit of trouble as well as this Life Stealer. As they haven't taken out any on the side of Maple Story. And with losing that Earth Spirit and feeling sort of worried about staying in this fight. There's the song. The TP out. Find out next time on DBZ if something more happens. Oh, there it is. That's their prize. The other racks. Oh, hey, a little X comes in. Mana leak. And Boris is going to actually blink in. QO could be in a little bit of trouble with the Blade Mail getting to about two-thirds health. And now Yawar is here. Mad's going to miss that Pearl Strike. They are going to end up taking out that Dazzle. And now Yawar is going to be the one who's going to be on the run as J.O. has followed them up. And they will get two kills. So the pressure for Maple's story to kind of make something happen... And the aggression they try to use does end up biting them in the ass. And they'll lose this Juggernaut as well as the Dazzle. So now, let's see if GG can force the buyback of Yawar. Oof. So down low, Flea just continuing to push bottom. They'll push these waves out even more. I mean, I'm trying not to reiterate myself, but... I mean, how many times can you see the same thing and... Kind of just let it go. They're not even going to force the buyback of Yawar. They're going to go back to farming and continue to sit and wait on the buyback status of Kuo, which he almost went down again, which could have been huge. But now 10 seconds left till he has buyback again. And maybe, just maybe, at that moment we'll see them push. And we'll see a Roche come up in a little bit of time. 10 seconds, so it does kind of line up for them to both get the buyback back. Buyback up on Kuo as well as Roche, so... And with buyback on Naga, as well as Roche, this time they'll go in. Now their Divine Rapier getting ready to be built on Medusa. You'd almost think that this was Chinese Dota. So J.O. Mad just working at this Roche once again. As another Divine Rapier comes out for Medusa. And that should... Is that going to be a Stash Rapier just in case he dies and has to buy back? Or is he going to hold on to that? So, smoke comes out for the side of GG. Well, actually, let's go back to this deuce. I really want to. I'm really curious. Yeah, it's going to be a stash divine rapier just in case. Forced to buy back. Buy back, get that rapier back online. And it's not immediately the end if the Medusa does go down.
Whew. So, the infest is there out on mad again. <laughs> One more time as they look towards high grounds. Sword crest from Buryu is gonna keep Ritsu alive. There is 25% life steal out on Ritsu. Let's take a look over at this axe. What does he have? Ooh, song. I'm not looking at this. Naga getting a little bit too preoccupied. They do get the song sweep out on four. Is, is that it again? I, I hope not. So last time they song, they back off. Let's see. Nope. And I got nothing else to say. We've seen this replay four times already. I've never felt this kind of insanity slowly just come over my eyes and watch the definition of insanity. Naga can continuing to throw Illusion's top and sit in the top of this base, and there's another song. But will the team follow it up this time around? Swept is four on the side of Maple Story, trying to set something up. Mad is there. There's the Shallow Grave already early on this Dazzle, but there's the Stone Gaze and backing off his Mad Jo and Stan King. Flea's going to try and go in, turns the Medusa to stone, and they've lost Kuo. I thought they'd go in on this Medusa. I'm not looking at QO. He ends up falling. Buying back again. Rinse, repeat. We'll be here for 10 more minutes. Here we go again, folks. Here we go. Again. Everybody pray. That something will happen, please. Two minutes till the Aegis is reclaimed, and let's just take a look at that buyback status. Down for six minutes. I'll take your tribute. And another smoke play coming out from Maple Story. Are, are you guys going to leave the base? They think about it, they go back. And they sit there. I'll take that. Oh, Mad might be in a little bit of trouble. He's infested with J.O. There's the blink with the call. Flea has found himself nearby. The BKB is going to be popped in now. It just looks as though Ritsu is going to tear away at Mad. Going to use that Lotus Orb, send that snake right on back and... As well as that poison touch. Rolling Bulger in. Maybe they find something. They go in on the Dazzle. There's the Stone Gaze. Boris is in with the Blade Mail. And another song comes on out. And GG, they elect to. Leaf. They're trying to hire Burrow Strike out is mad. BKB pop there by Ritsu. And, and both teams, they clash again. And all five survive. And they, they leave again. Minus 45 second respawn time, solid for this Earth Spirit. Uh, I guess nobody wants a bounty rune when you're all six slotted and have been. Take another look over at Ritsu, saving up for a refresher, try to get that double stone gaze. In this game, at least for GG, comes down to the fact that QO needs to be with his team and has to survive and fight. Both times they've clashed, QO is up here. By his lonesome self, throwing illusions, gets picked off all by his lonesome self. The rest of his team's over here towards mid. He songs, the rest of the team backs out, and we're back at this. Oh, please, dear God. Mm. 
Why? Oh, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. Woo! Oh, sorry. Net worth hasn't been up. Buyback status. Let's get that up there. Kind of losing it here. Medusa, three and a half minutes until buyback is back. The rest of the team has it. No Aegis, so they'll probably sit and wait for Roche as well as buyback for the Naga. I should I should just get my memoirs out. Chapter one. It was a cold day in November when two parents thought to have their third kid. They would name him Ben. Ben did not know that twenty four years later. He'd find himself on the brink of insanity after a 67-minute game of Dota. That is ever so far from being over. Before this, Ben was a happy kid. He played baseball. He went to school. He did comedy. He liked the job of casting. And he had this twinkle in his eye. That one day, he would cast the most exciting game of Dota there ever was. But, alas, there was this giant thing in the way. And that thing was this game of Dota between a team name based on a game that's been dead since 2010 and a term you use before you get all salty and lose the game. Now, despite having a team named GG, that team has never seen the word GG because they continue to just song and retreat and song and retreat. But one day, it'll all be over. And Ben will be on BTS, BTS Hub telling this story to the many viewers that call him a 2K caster. <laughs> Back to the game, guys. Back to the game. So, 67 minutes into this game, we take another look at this so-farmed Medusa. Two Divine Rapiers, Refresher Orb, just in case. Stone Gaze, dead, has to buy back Refresher, pick up the other Divine Rapier, and continue to fight. But I'm not sure when that will ever happen, because the only abilities used by the team of GG is so. So Burl Strike actually comes out on Boris. He might have found himself out. There's the Yules. BKB popped. Rage is there from J.O. They finally find themselves a kill on GG. It's finally happening. Jug's gonna blink on out, and now they might look to get themselves a kill on this Coddle. And maybe something more. They get the open wounds out. Jail with the double kill. They've lost two on the side of Maple Story. It's finally happening. They get the ult there from Witch Doctor. Rolling Boulder in from Flea. They'll get a third in Dazzle, two of which will buy back. None dead on the side of GG. And the Divine Rapier is down. As they do lose the Medusa, he'll have to buy back. Picks up another Divine Rapier. The Lotus Orb is used. They do get the stun out once again on this Jug, as well as the Kato is going to be kept alive by that Shallow Grave. They'll lose Jug one more time. And now the Stone Gaze comes on through. GG might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the Blinding Light to push them on back. QO getting very low. But now Flea with an amazing play. He does stone up this Medusa. Throws him into the entire team. There's the Burrow Strike. Going to be four staff out. And now it looks as though UR is trying to make something happen. They've lost J.O. They've lost Kilo. So they've lost two on the side of GG. And both teams just... 
kind of continue on their way. Now that they've lost both the Life Stealer and QO again with no buyback for 110 seconds, Jo's going to be forced to buy back, and let's see if maybe Maple Story have made their time through in a good patch in 2017 and can finish this game. You are, he'll be the front force with this Solar Crest out from their Cottle Justin. They're looking for a tier 3. They'll finally open up the shrines. It's 70 minutes in. And there's the weave as well. As Ritsu. Looking to possibly finish this game. They go straight towards tier 4s. And just trying to defend their base is Axe. They continue on forward. There's the Burrow Strike out on 2. And now it looks as though Yoar might be in a little bit of trouble. There's the Stone Gaze again with the BKB. Jo's going to get very well. He's going to die. He's dead for 2 minutes. We're 70 minutes in. There's no buyback on a Naga. No buyback on a Life Stealer. Witch Doctor just trying to throw an ult to save his life. There's the Epicenter coming in through from Mad. But the unkillable Ritsu is there. They actually end up losing their Juggernaut. But they're still losing their Tier 4s. There's, it looks as though they might be able to take the Ancient. There's the Boulder Kick on the Medusa into the well. The Burrow Strike comes through. He's dead. The Divine Rapier takes him out. He's dead for two minutes. And the game is thrown right on back. They lose their coddle. They might lose one more in Boris. Here's the boots of travel out on Flea. He's going to have to stay invisible. And they just call GG. It's over. I thought Maple Story had it. Oh my god! I was out of my chair! I thought they were just gonna go in, song, and, and back off again! Chapter 3, the game ends! And we go on for another. We'll be right back. I need to play, uh, apparently, some ads. And look for my life. My sanity. Whew. Gaming bets on.